Hey guys, good morning and welcome to Vertical Church's online celebration. We are so excited that you guys are here for our pre-service lobby. Um, do me a favor, you're watching on Facebook, hit that share button, tag somebody in the comments. Let someone know that we're going live in just a couple minutes. But before we do, I'm here in our emergency food pantry with our outreach director, Elder Paul Bronson, and our facilities director, Ron Sells. Um, and I just wanted to take a second to kind of expose you guys to what Vertical is doing in this season to make sure that people's needs are met and to make sure that we're being the hands and feet of Jesus throughout this pandemic. So I'm going to ask them a couple questions just so you guys can get an idea of some of the services that we're offering and how we're helping people in this season. So I hope you guys are ready. They're amazing people. Love them both. But I'm going to start with Paul and just ask you a quick question um, about how many people have we fed so far since this has started? How many things have we delivered? Uh, off the top of your head, kind of, where are we right now? Well, first off, yesterday we had an amazing event in New Hallville. Okay. We served 500 families. And so far, each week, we're serving about 600 families on average. Awesome. We've, we've eclipsed 6,500 families as of yesterday, and that's 20,000 bags that's awesome. of groceries Get that out. we've served. That's awesome. So far, 20,000. We're not planning on stopping anytime soon, right? Mm, this is going to go on for a couple more months, it looks a like. A couple more months. Dude, that is so amazing. Think about that. 20,000 bags of food, and it's done and made possible by you guys. You guys at home who are watching, who are faithful to give every week and be a part of the mission and vision of Vertical Church right here in West Haven, Connecticut. Um, so, Paul, do me a favor. About how many volunteers are serving right now uh, across the board, would you say? Across the board, we've got a, quite a few things going on. I would okay. say it's over 120 to 140 volunteers. That's awesome. And they've been phenomenal. They're dedicated. They're, they're here every night that we need them. Yeah. They're making calls when, uh, to the seniors mm -hmm. since March 17th, wow. since the beginning of this. So they've been really stepping up. This whole church has come together. Yeah, that's awesome. And would you say you guys are in need of more volunteers? Yeah, we could always use more volunteers because we're, 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 we have a lot going on. And it's going to continue. Okay. So the support is needed. That's awesome. And if I was somebody looking to volunteer, looking to get involved, where would I go to sign up? Go to the church website and you'll see the ERT team. Okay. Go in there and there's going to be four or five different groups that you can join. You could deliver. We always need delivery drivers. Every other Saturday, we're delivering groceries to our seniors in New Haven and in West Haven. Last week, we did over 600 deliveries. So we need the drivers. We have pre-scheduled routes. You take five routes, you go to the, to the seniors and drop them off. That's a big area of need that we do every other week. That's awesome. So guys, if you're watching and you feel like this is something you may want to get involved in, again, you can go to verticalct.com and you can sign up for the emergency response team and you can be a part of what God's doing here. Just in case you're a little bit nervous about how we're being, you know, how we're doing with safety and precautions. Um, Ron, could you care to tell them what we're doing to kind of make sure our volunteers are safe as we're serving others? Uh, I would say to the volunteer at home, it, it's safe. Uh, we had to submit a, a set of uh, uh, written protocols um, uh, that was done by Pastor Ken and, and approved by the city in order for us to be able to handle all these mobile drops and, and be able to do what we do in this building um, as an emergency food pantry. Uh, what we've established here is, is some guidelines. We've used our tables uh, as social distancing, okay. um, so our volunteers never have uh, any physical contact with each That's other. Awesome. They just pass a bag down the table, the next person fills. Uh, and we move it and it just goes into a box and, and out for delivery or out for a, a mobile drop. Um, so I would say to a volunteer, if you're comfortable uh, being in this environment, we listen, we provide the gloves, we provide the sanitizer, the building awesome. that is sanitized uh, each day uh, with an approved CDC uh, product um, uh, that's done you know, either daily or nightly after the team is in. Um, so come on out. That's awesome, man. I'm excited. How about you guys? I've done it a couple times already, and it's just an amazing environment to be in here with the volunteers who are passionate and who are ready to serve um, with a smile and learning to love people. Um, real quick, I have another question for you, Ron, before we get going into service. Um, you know, you guys just did your drop yesterday uh, for New Hallville. Um, what does it take to make that happen? How much does it take? How much food do you have to buy? Like, what are all the logistics behind making a drop like that happen? Well, each week um, we, we, we've got a set of partners, uh, the Connecticut Food Bank that we procure from. Uh, we also buy produce uh, and, 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 and vegetables uh, to supplement those items in order to feed 500. One thing um, this pandemic has, has exposed is that 
food insecurities and what it takes to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's you know it's actually become you know as as sad as the pandemic can be. It's it's also a bright spot from the church yeah. because it's allowed us to be the church. Uh, we we move about anywhere from eleven to twelve thousand pounds of food per wow. week okay. uh, into the building, um, and it's packed and, and goes out. Uh, we have a, also a fifty three foot uh, freezer trailer awesome. out that we keep all our refrigerated and frozen food that was you know. It was also a donation through our partners through the city of West Haven. That's awesome. Um, so we've, we've been able to do some remarkable things um, during this time period. And, and we, as, as uh, Paul uh, has stated, we, um, we don't anticipate this going away anytime soon. Okay. Um, so we, we, we love being a part. Love it. Well, I thank you so much to Ron and thank you so much to Paul, guys. As you can see, we're moving. We're not going to stop being the hands and feet of Jesus. Um, but I just don't want you guys to miss that it... It takes a lot to do something like this. As Ron just said, we're buying over 12 to 13,000 pounds of food a week. And if you feel led, maybe you say, I don't really feel comfortable serving in person right now. That's not the only way you can get involved. If you go to our Give Online or Text to Give, you can designate where you want your funds to go. If you want to give a special offering to help reach people in need, you can click on the drop-down bar and click Food Donations, Food Pantry, and you can make sure that you're giving to make sure that this effort keeps going and people who have needs are kept <laughs> or keep getting met by the gracious generosity of the People Vertical Church. But without further ado, y'all, it is time to go into service. I hope you guys are ready to worship. Our worship team is prepped. We're it's about to go down, and then Pastor Ken has an amazing message that he's going to deliver as well. We love you, praying for you. Get up, get off your sofa. Let's worship together. Welcome, Vertical Church. Are you ready to praise our King today? Let's sing this out together.
You're worthy. We praise you, Lord, for who you are, for the purpose you have for us, Lord. We are everything because of you. We are created for your glory. Who am I that the highest king would welcome? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who oh, the sun sets free. Oh, it's free. His grace was While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. For a purpose that there is no sin great there's nothing there's nothing that can separate you from his love from his grace that is new every morning so I want you to sing the bridge with me again because I am chosen you have chosen me Lord
there's a place for me I'm a child of God Yes I am Yes I am Lord Today we're going to introduce you to a new song and it's called You Keep On Getting Better. And the words in this song remind us that in every season, in every situation, that He is good, that He is good. And it's just such a beautiful reminder, I feel, with everything that's going on in the world, that even when it feels like nothing is going right and everything is falling apart, we can rely on our Father and His goodness and His faithfulness and His promises. So sing with us this morning. Oh, oh. And I will sing of Your goodness. I will sing of Your love. Though the seasons come quickly, You have always been now. Though the night may get darker, though the waiting seems long, you have always been faithful to remind me of your love. And you are good. In the morning I'll sing you are good. In the evening I'll sing you are good. You are good to me You have always been patient You have always been kind You're consistent through the ages Oh, what a friend of mine So I'll remind my soul to bless you Standing firm upon your truth Knowing you cannot be shaken Cause I see you this morning that our God, that our God is good and he gets better every morning, every day. Oh, you keep on getting better. Yeah. Keep on getting better. Keep on getting better. Keep on getting better. Keep on getting better. Oh, you keep on
Though the storm may be raging on Though there may be chaos all around <laughs> Though it's hard to see right now I know that you are good I know that you are good I know that you are good, yeah Father, so we celebrate today. We celebrate today. You are God in the morning. You are God in the evening. You are God in the sorrow. You are God in the morning. Yeah. Oh, wow. it's getting better every day. Cause you're good. our time let's just sing that one more time you are good in the morning i'll sing you are good in the evening i'll sing you are good you are good to me yeah. oh jesus thank you thank you for being such a good father that you are consistent in every season in every situation Father God and right now we just pray for everybody that's watching that they will be reminded of your love of your grace of your faithfulness and even in the dark and scary times you are here and you are near and you are fighting our battles and so we put our trust in you this morning it is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Man, I love the times where we can just come together 
and to worship God like that. I'm so grateful for our worship team, and I know and I hope that you felt the presence of God in your home and that you got a chance to just rest in Him and experience some peace. Um, and we're just going to keep moving along with our service and go to our tithe and offering in a second. But before we do, I just want to take a second and say, hey, if you're new to Vertical Church, in the comment section is a link that says, if you're new here, click here. And that is our connection card. That is our way to stay connected with you, to know that you're new, you're just checking out our service. We just ask for a little bit of information, not to hassle you, but just to send you something to say, hey, thanks for checking us out. Thanks for being a part of Vertical Church's Sunday celebration. Please click that and fill that out whenever you can. And also, y'all, I know you guys have been asking us questions about when the church is opening. I know some people are ready to jump back in. I know some people are a little bit more hesitant. We want to hear from you. Your opinion matters to us. And so in the comment section, you're going to see another pinned comment that says survey link. And you can click that and you can take a survey to let us know your thought and your opinion about when we should open, how we should open, if we should have any you know new rules in place, what type of safety precautions should we put. We want to hear your opinion about COVID and Vertical Church and reopening. Let us know. Don't forget to hit that survey thing. You can even go back to this video in the comment section later and click it to take the survey. We really want to hear from you. And lastly, thank you guys so much. We are about two to almost three months into this thing and your generosity has blown us away. It is without your faithful giving that we could probably not keep doing what we're doing, but because you guys believe in Vertical Church, because you call this place your home, and because you're faithful to give every single week, we have the opportunity to continue serving others, loving people, and leading people to look more and more like Jesus. And here we are again, another chance for you to give into the mission and the vision of Vertical Church, helping and leading people to take their next step with God. Um, and what you can do, there's three easy ways you can give. The first is text to give. You can text 73256. Obviously, there's going to be a graphic that shows you where to do it. You can give online at our website, verticalct.com slash give. Or if you want, you can mail us a check. Whatever the way you're giving today, thank you so, so, so much because you are enabling the work of God to continue advancing in this season. And so right now, I'm going to take a second to pray for your giving before we hear Pastor Ken and as he kills this message. So Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for the faithfulness of your people. Bless their giving today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for your giving. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Church Online. Wherever you're listening from, wherever you're watching this, thank you for taking the time to tune in and to be with us today. I'm Pastor Ken Vance, the senior pastor here at Vertical Church. Love that you're connecting with us. One day when we're reopened, hopefully I get a chance to see you face to face. And to all of my regular church family, man, I desperately miss you guys. It has been really weird the last number of weeks speaking to an empty room. But man, we've been dealing with a lot of weirdness, haven't we? But guys, today as we begin, whatever you need to do, put the distractions and stuff aside. Let's get ready to receive from God today. I believe there's no distance in the realm of the Spirit. I believe God's presence is right there with you today. And I believe the Spirit of the living God has something important to inspire and to illuminate in our hearts. And so as we get ready to receive, let's all pray together. You know, we've been praying as a church with the United 714 movement. 
And so as we pray today for our nation, I want to pray more today than just for COVID-19. You know, I've been disturbed by the events that have happened this last week. And I know that we've been trusting God to heal our land. And it's not just from COVID-19. We need to be able to be healed. And it's going to take God's power and God's grace to bring us together because we're a nation divided. We want to pray today, today, that we would absolutely see God eliminate not just COVID-19, but racism. And so let's pray together right now. Heavenly Father, we humble our hearts today and remember your words that spoke hope to us so many years ago. You said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, that you would in truth hear from heaven, forgive our sin and heal our land. And desperately in this time, almighty God, we as a body united pray that you would in truth heal our land. Father, we want to see COVID-19 eradicated, not just from America, but from our world. But Lord, we're also asking in this so many ways for the sake of our nation, because our nation has suffered from so many things. And Father, we pray that systemic racism would be eliminated and destroyed. For hate is a powerful force, but love is the only force powerful enough to defeat it. So we pray that the love of God that you said would be shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit would rise up in every believer today to stand, almighty God, for the things that you stand for, to love what you love and to hate what you hate. Father God, to recognize that every single human being deserves respect and dignity because all human life was created in the image and likeness of God. Forgive the sins of our nation, Almighty God, and bring us together. Heal our wounds and strengthen our nation, Almighty God. We believe you and we trust you because it's only you that can do it. So let the body of Christ truly arise and shine in this hour to bring hope, to bring peace, and to let love flood our streets. I pray, Almighty God, for this in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Thank you all for praying with me today. If you've been with us, we've been talking in a series that we've called Our Response Ability. Why? Because as we've said through the course of this series, we can't control what happens to us, can we? We all know that, especially in the time in which we live. You can't control the circumstances of life, nor can you control how people treat you in life. But the good news is this, we all have the ability to respond. God gives us a response ability. The ability to respond, and the good news is this, it's not what happens to us that determines our destiny, but how we respond to it. And that's why this series is about helping you take control of your life. In fact, part of the inspiration for this, years ago I learned this prayer, what they call the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference? Well, this is series is, in, is there to inspire the courage in you to change the things that you really can change and to accept the things you can't change. But all of us can take control of our lives and move forward. And we learn through this series, first and foremost, by owning it. Owning it means taking responsibility for our lives. Stop giving away the power through blame and excuses. But when you own it, you can change it. When you own it, you can do something with it. And that's what I've hoped through this series, that we would take responsibility for our lives so that we can move forward. And then we realize we need to rethink it. Because why? Rethinking requires us to learn to renovate, to, to remove old things and replace them with new. In other words, to remove lies, we've discovered, and replace them with truth. Why? Because God changes us from the inside out. It's the renewing of our minds that causes the transformation of our lives. And then last week, if you were with us, we talked about the need to get connected. Why? Because our connections determine the quality and the direction of our lives. And it's so true. We choose the people we allow in our world. And so in essence, we all need to take those steps forward. And if you've missed any of the messages in this series, you can watch them online at your own discretion. But today is the last installment in the series. It's called Persevere. Persevere, because perseverance 
is required to move forward because perseverance is the ability to keep moving even when you face difficulties and challenges. And life is wrought with them. We always, we can't control those circumstances from happening, but you and I can keep moving in spite of them. Perseverance is an essential and important quality. And I believe in our time more than ever, because we, we live in a culture where some people have tried to believe and embrace this idea that you can get results without effort. And that's just not true. So here's where I want to begin today. I have a question for us. And here's the question. What does it take for you to quit. When will you quit? In other words, all of us have faced difficulties and challenges. And when is it in the midst of facing a difficulty and challenge that you give up, that you throw in the towel, that you stop moving forward? Whether that's relationally, you know, when you're ready to give up on a relationship, or whether it's emotionally, when you're going through difficulties and you just want to curl up in your bed in a fetal position and just give up? Or is it financially, when you're ready to just quit and say, that's it, I can't handle it? Or in our careers, in our work, spiritually even, how many people have given up when facing a challenge, when facing a difficulty, and they thought, why is this happening? I thought believing in God, putting my faith in Jesus, would mean I would never ever face challenges or problems again. I've met people like that. I don't know where that comes from. That is a crazy philosophy, but it's not biblical. Why do I say that? Because our Savior told us this. He said, in the world you will have troubles. But he told us to fear not, because he's overcome the world. And that's the good news I have for us, is that we can overcome. We can persevere. In fact, have any of you ever run before? I'm talking about for exercise or maybe even uh, uh, competitively. Because if you've ever done any running, your mind will always tell you to quit long before your body ever does. You know, years ago, I used to run a lot because I played soccer. So getting ready for season, I used to run some, sometimes daily 15 miles a day to get ready for, for game, uh, uh, you know, get what I call game readiness. So in essence, my mind so many times along, especially the neighborhood I grew up in, in Stanford, was up on a hill. Everywhere to get home required me to go up hills. And my mind would beg me to quit, beg me to stop running long before my body. My body was actually able to do far more than my mind was trying to tell me I couldn't do. And sometimes our mind doesn't always tell us the truth. We talked about that before when talked about renovating our minds. And so it's important because people who run marathons, marathon runners, there's something that they call hitting the wall. A, marathon, a marathon is 26 mile run and about the 20 mile mark, runners will tell you what they call hitting the wall. Generally that's when all the glycogen has been depleted in your muscles and you're, and you're getting to that place where everything is a beginning to say, no, no, stop, stop. And runners realize they need to run through that situation. They need to not because they've hit a wall, but they can finish the race. In fact, the Boston Marathon, it's not one of the most difficult marathons, but in the Boston Marathon, at mile 16, you hit the hills. There's four hills in Newton area of Boston. And the last hill is at the 20.5 mile marker, and it's called Heartbreak Hill. Because at that point during the end, even though the hill isn't that large, probably about 88 feet that you have to go up over about a little less than a half a mile, but it's at that point when you're dealing with all of the, 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 the rigorous, rigors of this trip, hitting potentially the wall in that moment, and now having to go up an incline, that's why they call it Heartbreak Hill, because too many runners at that moment quit. They give up. They stop running the race. And so we're all heading, when this is where I want to go today, we're all heading somewhere in life. We're all on a course. We're all heading to accomplish or to achieve things in life. And it's important that we begin to recognize that to finish our course, to complete our journey, it will require perseverance. Perseverance is important. Why? Think about this with me. The most important things in life, the things that value, that are the most valuable, the things that are the most uh, um, precious to us, 
generally don't come without perseverance, without a fight and a willingness to continue on when difficulties or challenges come up. Perseverance, again, that ability to keep going despite difficulties and challenges. It's important that you and I see that because we'll all face difficulties. We'll all face challenges. But the truth of the matter is to finish and to complete the journey will require often perseverance. Think through this. If you've ever gotten a college degree, you realize the responsibility of persevering. When you've studied so much and you think you can't go on anymore and you realize you had to get up and do it again. To, to achieve a personal goal, maybe start a business, maybe go back to school after years and finish a degree that hadn't been finished, or master a skill will require perseverance. If you've ever sought out to lose a significant amount of weight and to keep it off, you realize the necessity of perseverance. If you've ever wanted to have a great marriage or to raise well-adjusted children, you realize the necessity of perseverance. Or if you've ever wanted to build a career or restore a strained or difficult marriage, how much perseverance is a part of it? Overcoming anxiety, overcoming a depression, overcoming any type of an addiction or anything like that. All of these things that are so worth fighting for, so worth finishing, require us to exhibit perseverance. Perseverance is an actual biblical value that you and I must embrace because we're all, again, heading somewhere in life. And it's important that you and I see it in this respect because to finish our course, here's the first point I want to talk about. Getting from where we are to where we want to be, getting from here to there will require us to persevere. You know, I like to put things in a way that makes it easier for us to remember. So getting from here to there will require that we persevere. And that's true. Because again, to attain those goals, to do the things we want to achieve most, to, they don't happen overnight. They require persistence. They require perseverance. They require many times a fight. And that's what's important, even spiritually speaking, to accomplish what we want, to get where we want to go with God. The things that we want to achieve in our spiritual lives will require us to fight the good fight, to persevere and finish our course. That's how the Apostle Paul thought it. In fact, listen to this. In 2 Timothy 4, the Apostle Paul put it this way. In 2 Timothy 4 and verse 7, now Timothy was his closest associate, his disciple, probably the one he was most intimate with, the one he had vested most of his life into this young man that would continue on after Paul. In this letter, 2 Timothy was Paul's last letter that he wrote. And he's wrote it, writing to his closest disciple. And listen to what he writes. In chapter 4, 2 Timothy 4, 7, it says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. See, Paul understood that to accomplish the things that we want to in life, we have an enemy who opposes us. But the good news is this. Jesus said, even though we face difficulties, we can overcome. Why? Because we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And so in essence, Paul says he fought a good fight. He finished the race. I've kept the faith. Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only me, but all who have longed for his appearing. And so to finish the race, Paul said it required perseverance. You see, most of us will never face anything near what the Apostle Paul faced. In 2 Corinthians, he went through a long list of things, that, the challenges that came before him. He was beaten with rods three times. He was whipped by the Jewish authorities. Forty lashes, less one. Paul spent a night and a day in the deep, in the ocean, in a shipwreck situation. He understood nakedness. He understood hunger. He understood thirst. He experienced so much. In fact, when you read the book of Acts, 
let alone Paul was stoned in the book of Acts. And I don't mean recreationally. I mean rocks. In essence, when Paul was faced persecutions and difficulties, he got about as tough as it can get. But yet, each situation that he went through, he persevered and continued on. And as Paul said here, he finished his race. And therefore, it was laid up for him a crown of righteousness. It wasn't just for him, but was for all of us who finish our race. And that's what I want to encourage us today. That's what I want to inspire us. Taking charge of your life means running the race that's set before you. The finishing the course that God designed for your life. But to get to that end. To finish your course, to see the results that you desperately want to see will require perseverance. And it's important because the Christian life, again, is filled with challenges. And it's important that we recognize that God is with us, that God is for us, and God will help us to get through. In fact, it reminds me of this. I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be in the position that I hold today without the issue of perseverance. You know, many years ago when I left the business world to come work for our former senior pastor, the challenges that I was faced with, the things that I had to deal with, so many problems arose. And I know the spiritual realities that came before me because, man, the enemy is real. You know, most of my life I really hadn't dealt with the issue of depression, but so much spiritual uh, a pushback so much because there were so many things I wanted to accomplish and do so many things I wanted to get ahead in and I was facing challenge after challenge pressure after pressure things that I would do weren't good enough things that I tried to accomplish and so many times my mind was trying to tell me to quit to go back into business because why I had done well in business I had prospered in business in fact taking a two-thirds pay cut to come into a situation that you believed was God was it going to be with all the challenges that were before me? But you see, in that midst, in that time, we were going through a building project here, the building that we're in. And one of our close friends in ministry, a man named Rick Renner, that I had become to know pretty well at the time, we had spent time together, and he was visiting our church. And it was in that moment, because I was going through such a difficult period of time, because there, I felt like there was nobody I could talk to about it beside my wife. I'm so grateful for my wife. But I wanted a different perspective. And when you're serving somebody else, sometimes you can't talk up and you can't talk down. You grow closer into God, but I just felt like God was putting on my heart. Somehow, some way, Rick would understand what I was going through. Talk to him. And it was in that moment I said, God, if this is truly you, you're going to have to open that door because I will not venture down that road to talk to him about a difficulty that I'm, healing, that I'm dealing with right now. Because I never wanted to bring any disparagement to my leader. I don't know if it was my leader. I don't believe it was my leader situation. It was a situation I was in and struggling through. And so Rick opened that door. And in a conversation, I said to him, Rick, how do you know if you're doing right? By God? By the person you're serving? And by all the other factors for which you want to make sure that you're meeting. Because here's the point. There was more I felt in me than where I was at at the present. Was I doing right by God? Was I doing right by my leader? Was I missing God in some fashion? And Rick spoke this word to me and it was such a heavenly word. He said, Ken, because he knew our secession plan at our church. He said, Ken, doesn't the Bible say that one man lays a foundation and another builds thereon. He said, if you're the man that will take over this ministry, this is a good foundation. You will be tested on every level. He said, what may be in you may be the future. Maybe that is what God has for the future, but you need to get through the testing that you're in right now. And man, all of the darkness that had so surrounded my mind left in that moment because one word from God can make all the difference in the world. I hope today that you're inspired by this because it made me in that moment recognize that I can get through. I can persevere. I can get through this situation because greater is he who is in me than he who's in the world. And Satan is not going to stop my destiny, nor can he stop yours. Because listen to me, the only one who can make you quit is you. The only one that can throw in the towel and stop running the race is you. 
And that's why you need to, 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 to take the reserves that are in you, to recognize that God is with you. And that perseverance is part of the journey of growing and maturing in our walk with God. Because anything really valuable in life generally comes with a fight on our hands. It generally requires us to persevere. But it's so worth it when we achieve. And that's why it's important that we see that end because you and I need to realize, Jesus told us this. He said, God's word is like seed. And he told us that those seed when planted in the ground has to persevere. In fact, Luke's gospel put it this way. He said that the harvest, the harvest of that seed being germinated and growing to full maturity and producing the fruit it was designed required perseverance. Persevering through what? As Jesus' parable told us that we got to get through times of hardness. We have to get through the rocks and the weeds, the thorns of life, which he told us were heart conditions. When we let busyness and schedules choke out God's word, when we allow persecution and afflictions to give us the opportunity to quit on God and not continue forward, or hardness of heart not even listening anymore, we have to persevere. In fact, that's why when Paul, the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in, in, in uh, Galatia, he said, do not grow weary in well-doing, for you will reap if you faint not. Don't give up. Keep moving forward. Persevere. And perseverance is possible. Listen to me. Perseverance is possible because you and I need to realize to achieve God's ends, to, to finish God's course, listen to me, Hebrews tells us experiencing God's faithfulness to receive the promises of God. Hebrews 10, 36 says, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive the promise. You see, too often there can be a childish mentality inside of us. If you're a parent, you know this. When your kids are growing up, many times your kids want results without effort. Your kids will say, I want dessert, and you've, you've already laid out the plans. You say, no, you have to eat what's on your plate before you can get the reward. So you have to do the work before you get rewarded. We try to teach our children this all the time. We know this as adults, but how many times, honestly, have we fallen into this trap? Be honest with, you, with me, because sometimes we can find ourselves wanting results without putting in the effort. Why? Because many times, people are looking to lose weight without diet or exercise. You know, I saw this one on the Shark Tank one time. This person was selling a liquid where they said, it's gonna attack the fat cells in your body and eliminate all that. Well, let me tell you this. It requires, well, there is a way guaranteed that you can lose weight without diet and exercise, but I don't know if you want the, the answer. It's called disease. Okay? No, losing weight, keeping it off. That's the problem when everybody tries to get a, a quick end around. They might gain some short-term results that many times backfire into long-term discouragement because it comes back. You see, when you learn to get ahead, in fact, we try to do so, people who buy lottery tickets think that, you know, they want a quick fix to the situation. Do you know that the overwhelming majority of people who are lottery winners end up bankrupt? Why? Because the effort that it took to gain it and to earn it is the same effort it'll take to retain it. You see, what you and I need to recognize is when we go through difficulties, God matures us. He helps us to grow through those ends. He helps us to be better. Instead of, spiritually speaking, people will attempt to do that. They'll come into church and they've got these lifelong problems that they dealt with and they want a quick prayer or a quick counseling session, boom, and it's all over. All of my problems have disappeared. No, when you begin to walk with God, most of the time, the way God works in our lives is incrementally. Because we didn't get in the problems we're in overnight. And it's as we learn to follow God that we build the resistance and the perseverance that it will take for us to remain free. Once we have the breakthrough to remain in a situation that we ultimately wanted to be in. And that's why James said it this way. James 1 says this, Consider it pure joy, brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking 
anything. In other words, that's how God grows our faith. That's how we mature as believers. We need to learn to persevere because we'll all face challenges and difficulties. Aren't we all doing that right now? But you see, when you take control of your life, you'll need to persevere so that you can get ultimately to the place that God intends for your life to get. Because the race that God placed before us, he intends for us to finish it. And that's why we need to realize perseverance is possible. Perseverance is possible. But you have to learn to travel light. I remember years ago, in the early 90s, I had planned a trip to go to Europe. And, but at that time, I wasn't very much of an experienced traveler. And experienced travelers recognized the necessity of traveling light. So I had this huge bag, hauling it around. Those were the, before the days that they had rollers on the bottom of your suitcase. So lugging my luggage through areas, I got so desperate that I was able to go find a place in Europe that had like a pulley system that you could put your bag on, put bungees around it, and wheel it behind you. I was so desperate because why? Many times when you don't travel light, you don't get necessarily where you intend to go. What do I mean by that? Listen to this. The writer of Hebrews put it this way. He said in Hebrews 12.1, Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that, those, that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and finisher of our faith. For the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So perseverance is possible, number one by getting rid of your baggage. And talk about baggage here, the writer of Hebrews says, putting away weights and every sin that does so easily beset us. Many times we're carrying bags around that we don't even admit any longer. What am I talking about baggage? I'm talking about this, carrying around your past failures and thinking that you're a failure. No, just because you have failed in life doesn't make you a failure. You see, anybody who has ever succeeded in life has gone through difficulties and challenges that have gotten up again and again and again. Just because you failed, make it a learning experience. There is what we call noble failure. In other words, when you learn from the things that you messed up on the first time, when you do it again, you won't try it the same way you did it before. That's insanity. No, you got to get rid of the baggage. You got to not think any longer in the tense, in a standpoint of where I once was, but you need to recognize that you and God, you can get beyond the situation. See, baggage can also be wrong beliefs, beliefs that we hold on to that we don't necessarily at times recognize are wrong, but beliefs like trying to gain without pain. What do I mean by that? Again, if you've ever set out to lose weight, if you've ever set out to get a degree, if you've ever set out to, to get ahead and succeed in business, you realize that it requires a lot of sweat equity. It requires a lot of hard work and sometimes stuff we don't want to do, but we do this to get ahead. Because again, childish thinking is when you think that I can get results without effort. But we recognize this, that maturity is the realization that delayed gratification is a part of life. That I do the hard work now and get the reward later. I do what's necessary now and the, all the, the painstaking ways of learning and understanding and growing, I'm willing to do that and persevere through that because I believe the reward at the other end is worth it. And that's why I don't want you to quit. That's why sometimes you got to get rid of your bags. You got you to gotta jettison the cargo. You got to let it go because some of the things that we carry, sometimes they're bad attitudes that we have. People have bad attitudes because why am I going through this problem? Well, question is this, why not? Life's an equal opportunity destroyer. Problems come to every house. Sometimes a bad attitude, things like, why not, why me? Why all the rest of it? No, you need to realize that you can get through, but a bad attitude will cause you to stop. A bad, ad bad attitude will cause you to give up. A bad attitude will start the blame game going on. And so in essence, you got to get rid of those bags. You got to shed that unnecessary stuff. Get rid of excuses. Those are bags. What will it take for you to obey Jesus? You see, you got to put away all the excuses and all the reasons why you can't, and you need to adopt the biblical attitude that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
You see, that's the baggage. But the second reality, we can persevere. It's possible. Perseverance is possible, number one, again, by getting rid of your baggage. Number two, by fixing your eyes on Jesus. As, as the writer of Hebrews said here, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Looking unto Jesus, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In other words, what you and I need to remember is what did Jesus persevere to bring to us what we experience and sometimes take for granted? I remember when the movie The Passion of the Christ came out. As much as I tried to mentally put my mind around what the sufferings of Jesus were like, that movie blew my mind. When Kathy and I watched that movie in the movie theater, when it was over, we didn't move a muscle for 45 minutes. We couldn't speak a word. In fact, we drove home in silence because it put it into a different perspective. And I was like, Jesus, if you did that for me, I'm not wimping out on you because I will never have to do that much to persevere and to finish my course. Thank you for what you did for me. But you see, you and I need to realize that following Jesus does require us to take up our cross, not his cross, our cross. Why do I say that? Mark's gospel says it this way, Mark 8, 34, Jesus saying here, it says, then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. In other words, following Jesus, listen to me carefully, following Jesus means that sometimes you have to learn to say no to you. You see, that's the one we're not used to ever saying no to. What we want, we generally go after. What we want, we want. And we'll find every rationale, reason, and, 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 and uh, um, excuse we can why what we want is okay for us. We come up with all the rationale, all the reasoning, all of the excuses, all the things, right? Because we're not used to saying no to number one. But we need to realize that the true number one is Jesus. And therefore, following him, there are times that they require us to say no to ourselves. And sometimes saying no to us can hurt. Sometimes saying no to us is something I don't want to do. I don't imagine Jesus wanted to die on the cross because he wouldn't have sweat great drops of blood in the garden of Gethsemane before him, but he knew it was necessary. And many times what we have to go through to get where we ultimately want to go is important. Jesus embraced the cross and you and I need to embrace the reality of whatever it takes for us to get to where we ultimately want to go. Fixing our eyes on Jesus is that willingness that I'll say no to me because yes, sometimes getting out of our situations, we have to realize that saying no to me, like there are people that when you want to lose weight, and I don't mean to keep bringing that up, but that's a big goal that people have. And that's a great goal. But it will require us to say no to us. Getting out of a financial mess will require us to say no to ourselves. In fact, Dave Ramsey, in his all, I, I love this, he calls it scorch earth policy, when he helps people through Financial Peace University. In fact, if you're struggling financially, I encourage you to take that. We offer that, that's our discipleship methodology for people to know how to handle their finances wisely. But listen, Dave calls it scorch earth policy when you're willing to be so drastically say, no, we're going to total basic necessity. If I have to eat rice and beans for the next year to get some money saved and get out of this mess, we will do whatever it takes. See, it takes perseverance to get through. And that's important because people who have gotten out of financial crisis recognize that end. And so in essence, Perseverance is possible. Why? We get rid of our baggage. We fix our eyes on Jesus. And thirdly, listen to me, thirdly, by relying on God's supply. Relying on God's supply. Listen to this scripture. Romans, chapter, Romans 15 in verse 4, it says this. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in scripture and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ had so that with one mind and one voice we may glorify God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words here, what does he say to us? What's God's supply number one? That's why the Bible is so critical in our lives 
Because when we read it, we, f we see other people that were faced with challenges and difficulties. When you read like the story of Joseph, how he persevered through challenge after challenge after challenge because the ultimate reward, the ultimate plan that God has was so much greater than all the challenges that he faced to get there. And what you discover is that the Bible is full of encouragement and inspiration that helps us to realize that God never changes. He, as he was with Joseph, so will he be with us. As he was with Daniel, so will he be with us. As he was with Moses, God is faithful. God will do for us what he did for them because God never changes. And I love this. It says, God gives endurance. So the scriptures inspire us, the scriptures understand, but we can go directly to God because why? His spirit lives in us. In fact, one of the ways, guys, I pray for you all the time, one of the prayers the apostle Paul prayed, he said that you might be strengthened with might in your inner man. In other words, God's might, God's strength comes to inside of us by his spirit to give us the ability to keep going when we think we can't go on any further. And you see, the only one, again, I say that can quit is us. And God is in us cheering us on. God is in us. That's, that's why the writer of Hebrews started off with seeing we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses. In other words, all of these that were written about in Hebrews 11 had to persevere to achieve the ends that God had for them. And you and I, to get to where we ultimately want to be, it will require us to persevere. From, to get from here to there, we need to persevere. In other words, you and I need to recognize the necessity of this. But God has a supply. And as we talked about a number of weeks ago, listen, God's grace is truly sufficient for us. There are times we just need to embrace the grace because as Paul learned, that his grace works the strongest when we're at our weakest. Because when we're willing and wanting mentally to give up, God is in us, cheering us on, telling us we can finish the race. We can fight the good fight. We can overcome. So don't give up. Guys, take charge of your life. And how do we take charge of our life? Because remember, when we began this series, we said this. We can't control. We have no control over what happens to us, right? People and circumstances. But we do have a full ability to respond to them. And it's our response that ultimately determines where we end up, where we go. Because it's our response that ultimately determines our destiny. And that's why in this series we learned that what? You got to own it. You got to take responsibility for your life. You got to rethink it. In other words, you got to learn to think differently because that's how God transforms our life. You have to get connected with the right people. You need to choose the people that recharge you, the people that inspire you. Why? Because your connections determine the quality and direction of your life. But today, in this last installment, we need to learn to persevere. How so? Jettison your baggage. Fix your eyes on Jesus and trust in God's supply. Hey, pray with me right now, would you? Bow your heads and pray together. Father, thank you for all the people listening today. I pray that this series truly would be an inspiration to all. That, Father God, that they would take charge of their lives. That they would not remain stuck where they're at. But, Lord, that they would arise. That they would begin to move forward. That they would learn what's necessary so they can ultimately get to the place you have for them. So I pray, Almighty God, that you would do what only you can do in and through their lives and help them to grow to mature and to be everything you've called them to be. In the name of Jesus. Hey, listen, if you're watching with me right now and you've never made the decision yet to follow Jesus, I want to give you this opportunity right now. Wherever you're watching this from, whether you're watching it in your home, whether you're watching it in a, in a car, on a phone, wherever you're at, right now you can connect with the God of heaven who loves you so very much that he gave his one and only son. God so loved you. That's what I want you to rec recognize today on a very personal note. God loves you. You see, maybe other people have turned their back on you, but the God of heaven has sought you out. It's no accident you've watched this message today. And if you'd like a relationship with the God of heaven, it's as simple as this. I'd like to lead you in a simple prayer to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life. Why? Because he didn't come into the world to condemn you. He came to save you. He came to give you a fresh start. If you'd like to do that, just pray this simple prayer with me right now, wherever you sit. Say this, say, Lord Jesus, I believe 
that you are the Son of God. I believe you came to earth, became a human, so that you could die on a cross for my sins. I believe you rose again, and today I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. I love you, and I trust you that you are more than enough. Thank you for today accepting me, loving me, and making me now a child of God. Amen. Hey, listen, if you prayed that prayer with me today, write in the chat box, whatever you're watching this on, whether you're watching this on Facebook, whether you're watching this on uh, uh, YouTube, whether you're watching this on uh, a church live stream, whatever way you're watching this, there's a place that you can connect with us. And we have what we call a connection card. We would love to pray for you. We would love to encourage you. Our mission at Vertical Church is reaching and leading people to take their next step with God. We are cheering on the step you took today, but God has more things to mature and to grow you in your faith. And so if you would allow us the opportunity to do so, we'd like to send you some information about the decision you just made. We'd like to direct you to some things that would be great next steps for you. But ultimately, we want you to know we love you and we would love to pray for you by name. So if you'd fill out that connection card, it'd only take you a minute or so. We won't hassle you. We love you and we're excited about that decision. Well, guys, as we end today, I just want to give you a note. Listen, next week we're going to start a new series. We're going to start studying the book of Philippians together. Because the book of Philippians was written in difficult circumstances, but it is the greatest book of joy. So we're going to be, this, the title of the series is called Joyride. So I hope you're ready to go with me because right now we want, to, we want to invigorate your spiritual immune system because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So I hope you join me next week as we begin the series Joyride. God bless you. Have a great day. Man, wasn't that an amazing message from Pastor Ken? I love the way he speaks straight to the point, but also enables us with grace to kind of live up to the message of Jesus. And if you just made your decision today to follow Christ for the first time, we are so, so excited about that. That decision is not one to be taken lightly. It's not a one one and done type thing, but it's a journey. And we at Vertical Church want to help you take your next step in any way possible. So what you can do if you made that decision today to follow Jesus, hit that link in the comment section if you're watching on Facebook or on Church Online and fill out a connection card. When you fill it out, just ask for your name, your information, and there's a little box you can check that says, gave my life to Jesus. And we're gonna contact you and give you a couple next steps. And actually another next step that you could take if you gave your life to Jesus, or maybe if you've been following Jesus for the last couple months and you're wondering, how do I grow in my relationship with God? How do I get deeper in this thing? And it is made new. Tomorrow night via Zoom, we're gonna be hosting a made new class where we talk about all different things that is pertinent to the life of any new believer. You don't wanna miss it, it's free. You can sign up online at verticalct.com. It'll be happening weekly on Monday nights. Be a part of it, especially if you're looking to understand your faith a little bit more, to grow in your walk with God. That is the place you want to be. That is your next step. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us again. We love you. We're praying for you. Until next time, be blessed. Have a great week.